The TypeScript 5 beta was recently announced, and there's a new feature that I want to take a look at in this video. Years ago on this channel, I did a few videos on decorators when they were in the earlier proposal stages, and now it looks like they're an upcoming feature, and so TypeScript has added some great support for strongly typed decorators. We're going to take a look at that in this video. We're going to start by walking through the example they give in the TypeScript 5 beta blog post, and we'll talk through how this works, and then we'll look at ways we can play around with this, and I think it'll be interesting. So what we're looking at here is the strongly typed example from the blog post. And we're decorating this class method down here, this intro method. Now, decorators only work on class methods, and so you'll need a class to do this. But we're decorating it with this logged method decorator here. And logged method is this function up here. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of decorators, essentially, they are a way to wrap functions with other behavior. And so as you can see, what happens here is this takes some kind of target function, which is exactly this intro function down here. And then what we're doing is we create this replacement function and return it. And this is what's actually called down here on line 35 when we do person.intro. And so we're actually calling the replacement function, which inside of it calls that target function. So let's look at the type here and talk about how this works. As you can see, there are a couple of generic arguments that we're taking into consideration with this logging method decorator. We've got this, which is going to be the context for the person object that we're working with here. We've got the args, which is really just some array of anything. And these are the args that we expect our target function to take. Finally, there's the return type, which is what this function should return. Now, these are the only three generic arguments in the TypeScript blog post. Now, I've actually added a fourth generic argument here just to act as kind of like an alias so that we don't have to use this entire function signal signature here in multiple places throughout our code. Instead, what I'm doing is saying function here, our fn, uh, extends this signature. And this is going to be the signature of the method we're replacing. So it has some value this, which just means it's a method on a class. And then we have the arguments, which is just an array of anything. And then it has some return type. And this is important because what we're saying is our replacement method here has the same signature. We're replacing one method with a particular signature with another method that has the same signature. So where do we use this fn or function generic? Well, the target that we take which is the method we're replacing, has to be that. We also use it in the class method decorator context here. So our replacement function here is pretty basic. We're calling it logged method. And the idea is just that we log entering the method, we perform the function, and then we exit the method, and then we return the result. And of course, we can do target.call. To call this function, we need to make sure that it has the same value of this and then we pass it the arguments. So this is a pretty simple use of a decorator. I'm going to call uh, pnpm start. I have a pretty basic script set up here that is going to do my type checking first, and then also just run my TypeScript file. And as you can see, we get log entering method intro, then we get the log from the method itself, and then we're exiting the method. So decorators can be a great way to add some type of wrapping functionality to a class method without needing to modify that method directly. So what are some of the interesting ways we could use this? Well, first of all, one thing we could keep in mind is that we could actually return a decorator from another function. So maybe let's wrap this in another function. And I'm going to call this function log. And it's going to take a logging level. Maybe we're going to make that either info or warn. And then I'm going to return our logged method decorator here. And now we can use this level down here where we say log. Let's replace that with level here. And we'll make the same replacement here, replace it with level. Now we don't have this logged method decorator anymore. So let's replace this with a call to our log decorator. Let's pass it an argument. So this is kind of a neat pattern, I think. We can actually change the behavior of our decorator here a little bit depending on some argument that we pass in. So in this case, we're just changing the way that we log. And if we run this again, what you can see is we get info in those log lines instead. And we can change this to warn. And this time, you'll see that we say warn. So this gives you an idea of the types of things that you can do with decorators. But let's go a little bit deeper. One of the things that really fascinated me when I saw how we have to type the decorator is that we have to define the arguments for the function we want to replace. And what this means is that we can actually have decorators that work on those arguments in some specific way. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and let's create a new one that we're going to call limit. And what I'm thinking here is maybe limit is a great way to impose some performance restrictions on a particular function. Maybe you know you need to do some tuning on the database queries in this particular function. But until you get there, we want to limit the number of arguments that can be passed in or the type of arguments that can be passed in. Let's see how this might work. So the limit function here is going to take a count, which is some number. And then instead of expecting just any array as an argument, here, what I think we want to do is say we expect this to work on a function where we have some array of any as the first argument, and then 
any other arguments as the rest of the argument. Notice the syntax here. We've got an array here, and I'm saying the first argument in the args array, or the first argument for this function, should be some array. Doesn't matter what's in it, but it's some array. We're going to spread an array of any for the rest of the arguments, so the rest of the arguments, however many there are, can just be any type. Doesn't matter. Let's come down into our replacement method function here. Const uh, first arg equals args zero. And if we look at the type of our first arg here, we can see that it is an array of any. And so now let's compare it to our limit. Then we should probably throw an error. We can remove these console log lines here and really we don't even need a result variable. So now the way this works is our replacement method will first check the length of our array. If it's too long, we'll throw an error. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and call the function. So maybe we want to add a new method to our person class down here. And we can call this uh, intro group. And we can expect an array of guests here, which is just going to be some string array. So now let's change our intro here to intro group. So we have three people in our group here. So right now, if we go ahead and run this, of course, everything should build just fine. And we still have the logging wrapping around our individual intro function. Let's go ahead and add our limit here and we'll give it a limit of two. And so we're limiting the length of this array to just two for our intro group. And so now if we run this, we will type check, but we get a runtime error cannot call with more than two items. So we built a strongly typed decorator that acts as validation for the arguments of our function. And this could be really cool in a scenario where you have a bunch of common validations that you need to do in a lot of places. And instead of including those guards in each of your methods, you can have a set of decorators that make it easy to apply those validations to various methods. But each of the individual methods themselves stays clean and focused on the business logic that it executes and doesn't have to think about some of these other runtime validations. We could even change this so that it would actually modify that first argument. Let's say args zero should equal uh, args zero dot slice and we'll slice from zero to count. You can see that we don't get our error, but we only get two hellos here, one for Ben and one for Amy. Maybe that's not a great idea, depends on your use case, but I think it's pretty powerful that we have that flexibility. We're gonna take this one step further though. So we have a function that creates a decorator now. Let's wrap it one more time and create a function that creates a decorator creator. If that didn't make sense, don't worry, we're gonna do this. Now, I don't wanna have to type all of this out again, so we're gonna copy our limit function here, and we're gonna wrap this make guard decorator. So the idea here is that we want to be able to make these validation decorators pretty quickly and easily. So we need to take some generic parameters here. Let's take a type T, and this will be the type of the argument that our decorator takes. So in the case of, for example, limit here, this would be number because it refers to our count. So this is something that our decorator creator can take to set up the decorator itself. All right, so that's the type T. We're gonna need to take the arguments that we expect this to work with. And this should really just extend some array. Now these arguments are going to be the type of the function that we're replacing, right? The arguments that it expects to operate on. And in the case of limit here, this would be some argument list that begins with an array. We expect this to take a function, and this function is going to take some argument of type t. After that, it's going to take the args of type a, and we expect it to return a boolean. And this is whether or not our validation is true or false. So it's going to take the particular value that describes the validation limit, it's going to take the arguments that that limit needs to operate on, and it will return true if the validation passes and false if it doesn't. We also want to be able to pass a custom error message here. Now, how do we create the function that actually creates the decorator? Well, this function, and this is the equivalent of like our limit or log function now, is the one that's actually gonna take that value t that we need to operate on. And now we need to think about the decorator itself. So this is gonna remain the same. Args is no longer gonna be hard coded here because we know args needs to extend the actual array of arguments that we expect and that we're passing in at the top level here. So now down here in our replacement function, we want to actually begin by running our validation. If function, and this is the function that we passed in up at the top here, we have t from our decorator creator here, our kind of second tier function. So we'll pass t in there. And then we have the args right here from the replacement function. So let's go ahead and spread those args. And if this returns true, then call our target function like that. And then if we pass this, let's go ahead and throw a new error. All right, I hope this hasn't been too confusing. This is our make guard decorator. And so this is an easy way to quickly make these validation 
decorators. Let's actually use this. And we can recreate our limit decorator here with just a few lines. So we'll say limit uh, make guard decorator. And we don't even need to pass it the generics. So it will infer that from the function we're about to create. So we're going to have a function that takes a number, second argument of some array, and then we're going to have other args at the end, which is just, again, an array of anything. And then in this function, we can say array dot length should be less than or equal to the count. Cool. The main thing that we can see is that this is still working down here. At least it's type checking. Let's see if it is actually working. If we go ahead and run our script again, what we should see is intro group through the error, too many elements in array, the argument was two. So this actually does do exactly what we would expect it to do. Let's make one more here, and this could be starts with, and this will expect the first argument to be a string with a particular first character. So we can take that letter as our first character here, and then we can take some string as our second character. And so then we can do s dot character at zero. Let's do two lowercase, and we can expect that to equal letter dot two lowercase. So now we can actually stack this onto our intro here. And when we stack them, we do have to think about the order here. I think there's a small difference in what we're going to see. And essentially these wrap the function kind of like I think about it visually, right? So we've got intro, which is then wrapped with starts with, and then that is wrapped with log. It kind of goes up in the same order that you see it off the function itself. The other way to say that is that they are applied in reverse order as you read the code from top to bottom. Let's go ahead and change our limit to three and then run this one more time. Okay, so we have Ben. Now notice that because the log was applied last, we do get our entering method intro before we get our error of thrown. And so maybe in this particular case, I want to apply these in the opposite direction. So that validation always happens before any of the logging takes place. You could think about this in the case where maybe instead of logging, it's timing how long the function takes and tracking metrics like that. And so if the validations don't pass, you wouldn't want to track this metric. And now you can see that we have our lines for Ben, but we don't have anything for Amy because she doesn't pass the tests. So these are a couple of the things I've been playing with as I started to look at how you might be able to use decorators in TypeScript. I think there's a lot of power in having strongly typed decorators that can operate on the arguments of a particular function. And I feel like there's going to be a lot of decorator libraries where you can easily apply a lot of shareable behavior to different methods. I'm excited to see where this goes. If you have ideas on how this can be used or what you think of it, definitely let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.